Welcome Hi. to Knitting in Our Jeans. Yeah. I'm Liz. I'm Carolyn. Um, sorry, I just got a knitting question on my phone. Really? Yeah. <laughs> really? Huh. <laughs> so, Ashby, this is your question. Okay. And she's like, what's with the knit four together in the Tanya? It's to decrease three stitches because you're increasing three stitches due to the yarn overs. It looks nice. Yes, it's a bear to do. Yes. I'm going to text you exactly this, and then we'll get on with the intros. As I said, welcome to Knitting in Our Jeans. I'm Liz. And I'm Carolyn. And on Instagram and Ravelry, you can find me as 2 liz for you T O O L I Z Z F O R Y O U. And on Instagram... I'm usually the knitting in our jeans, and we haven't really gone anywhere, so I haven't been doing Instagram, because who wants to see a whole bunch of these little tiny socks? I'm done with these socks. No, I'm not done, but I'm so done, if you know what I mean with these socks. So I really haven't been taking pictures. I probably should have taken some pictures down in Annapolis, but I was so busy looking at the boats, I didn't take any. Um, but we're going to Rhinebeck this coming weekend, so we Yes, we'll be taking pictures here. We have to remember to take the bag with the um, pins. The pins. pins are over there. Okay. Okay. And we probably have at least one skein of our yarn that we can give. Um, so we'll have to paint the back of one of them mm -hmm. with nail polish. Okay. Okay. So if you see us there, say hi. That would be lovely. Um, and on Ravelry, I'm C-P-R-E-D-M-O-R. And, and she I'm, did just develop a little bit of a lisp because she's sucking on a throat <laughs> lozenge. Sorry, I'm like, what happened to you? Did you have a, like, you know, no, 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 nothing against stroke victims, but I was like, do I have to, like, did something go wrong here? And then I hear her sucking on the throat lozenge. I'm sorry. Sorry, I was just <laughs> like, uh, there is something very different that happened in the last, like, two seconds. <laughs> Speaking of which, yes, uh, my audible seems to have slightly sped up. I can I help you fix why. that. You probably accidentally pressed the play at one point five or one point two five. That's what I'm thinking. And yeah, I need I'll to get rid of that. Okay, we will. I, I you can't it. get rid of the option, but I can help you reset right, I it. I need to reset it. Yes. Okay. Because I thought. Well, now, um, <laughs> Ashley. So you need Rob is going. You. It's going really fast. I mean, I thought it was just this one Oxford Tea Room mystery. She's got this British accent. She's talking really, really fast. I'm trying to figure out whether it not, it's the the narrator or whether it's me or what's going on. And, and are the British speeding up and how they talk? It's like, wow. Um, and so then I put on one of our my in-death books. And she was talking really fast, too. And I went, oh, I think I have a problem. I have a problem. You have a problem, and I will help you with it. We that. printed out our Rhinebeck tickets. We did! And we have them on our phones, too, so just in case I yes. manage to lose my paper, I have it on my phone. And we printed out the uh, homework for both of Mom's classes and my class that I'm taking with Mom. Um, so this Mom's is stock taking... number five. I'm doing no. countdown. You have five. This, this is... five. No. Yes, this is, is number 11. Right. Five. And then we go four, three, two, one... <laughs> And then I can do my homework, because Nathan gave us homework. Not much. Uh, it's just no. to essentially knit a swatch and not bind it off. Um, Ashby says hello, by the way. Oh, and okay. And she says hello to the rest of you viewers yes, as well. Um, so, yeah. Um, so it's just a swatch, which I'm very excited about, because it should be pretty quick. Strantarja. Uh, yes, and you're also then taking a color work yoke class. Top down. Yeah. On Thursday. If any of you are coming on Thursday, I'm helping out at the check-in uh, counter in the morning. So say hi. I'd love to see you. Love to meet you. Um, that'd be really great. I won't have buttons then. Do we'll you know what you're going to be wearing on Thursday? I have no clue. It depends on what the are weather's you, like. <gasps> are you going to bring your new coat to Rhinebeck? It's going to be in the 50s. Oh, that's a good idea. Do you think we should wear... I can't wear my new coat because it's still in fabric form down there on the... <laughs> I looked at that today and I was like, last year or two years ago. Two years ago because I didn't go to Rhinebeck last year. Uh, hashtag wedding problems. Uh, not mine. <laughs> no. 
invited, um, invited, invited to a wedding. Invited to a wedding. Um, I had to go by myself. I got so I sick. I know. Um, <sighs> but I know I can't wear my coat, but... I will have my coat for I could wear my coat. And my coat is nice and warm. Or you could at least bring it. And it's really good for sitting on. Because yeah. it's nice and floofy. I could do that. That's a good idea. Because you're always cold in the classes. I am. Um, I obviously... This is a hand-knit sweater. So is mine. This is from a Vogue, I think, 1990. And mine is the uh, Chuck by Andy Satterland. Oh, nice. And actually, so when I was driving back from Mega Miles, I like the, the shoulders look, I guess it's because when I do this, they bunch, but that's fine. Regular sweaters do that too. Yeah, no, I so, like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is sparkly. Um, it's uh, Nerd Girl smashing in the colorway White Queen. Let's hear it for sparkle. Yeah. Um, and I figured since the color was so muted and um, the pattern is quite uh, classic that I could get a sparkly sweater. I like it. Um, and it looks really good, I think, on me. Um, and so anyway, mine's called a tie neck sweater. And what I liked about it is instead of tying it, it actually goes through a hole yep. in this tie and then it loops through and there it is. And I wear this all the time. You do. This, That's sweet Georgia. Yes, it is. And I forget the colorway, but she recognized it two years ago at, at, at Vogue. At Vogue. Yeah. And, um, I love it. I absolutely love it. And it looks so classic. It so really does. I'm very pleased. Very, very pleased. So I'm going to bring this with me. I, I've worn it before. I'm going to bring my botanical yoke. Mm -hmm. The red one. The red one. I'm going to bring my... Zweig. Zweig. I think Zweiging is Saturday. Zweiging. I would think so because that would be the hill. Um, I'm going to bring... Also, I think my... there's a Boylan Networks uh, meetup. And that might be also Saturday, so that might be why we're wearing them Saturday. Oh, that could be. Um, I'm also going to bring one of the sweaters that I made, the shorter sleeve sweater that I made uh, from Neighborhood Fiber that we dyed. I oh, dyed. your, um, the dances. one that has, oh, the no, dances. not dances. It's not dances. The Avalon one? No. The Avalon sweater? I may bring the Avalon sweater. I reblocked or I rewashed it. And I could wear that with, with, um... Tights, not tights. Leggings. Leggings. Legging. Leggings. Leggings would be the word. Oh my god, I got oh. Uh what have you got? Well, first I'm trying to find How do you have 114 things in your shopping basket. Because I just keep putting them there and then every so often I go through a purge and then every so often I go through a buy. It makes so much sense to me. I guess. So anyway, um, I'm going to be taking several sweaters so, with me uh, of the ones that I've made. Keep going. This is pretty old. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, we're looking for the blue sweater. Yeah. Okay. I think it's dancing. That, that one. Moscato. Moscato by Amy Herzog. So I'm going to bring Moscato. I'm going to bring Dances. Dances is the big apple. Mm. Um, so I'm going to bring five or six because yeah. they have different sleeve lengths. Mm -hmm. um, and it will depend on what the weather is like uh, and predicted to be because now they're saying in the 50s. Um, but sometimes, excuse me, it's colder up there than they say and sometimes it's warmer up there than they say. So I'm going to have a, a mixture. Excuse me. And you never know. Things. I might be pulling a Jasmine Knitmore. Finishing it as we r drive over? No. Wearing it half finished. Mm. Excellent. Because as the girls... So, um... We were just listening to the Knitmores. We were girls. just listening to Knitmores. Um, we're currently in the middle of their 500th episode. Um, and they were talking about how it stitches. Jasmine wore one of her sweaters with all of the stitch markers in it half unfinished. And I was like, oh. I might just do that with my Zweig. Because I completely lost my mojo on it. And, yeah. um... I started the sweater that I'm currently working on the hem on right now um, when Poppy was in the hospital last month. And so as the girls in Nerd Girl, or at least Amy's been telling me, you're ostriching into that sweater real hard. And I'm like, yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm ignoring the world and knitting this sweater. It's apparently what I'm doing. And I'm okay with that. Sounds good. Um, 
Unfortunately, it's not the sweater that, you know, will coordinate with everyone else, but I will wear a shirt uh, that, or I will pack a shirt that coordinates with my Zweig, and I will wear my Zweig half finished, if that's the case. Um, I will show you my current progress on it the when Zweig? we get to that. Yes. Oh, okay. I did about another inch on Yeah, the I'm going to start packing soon. Um, yeah. But I'm working on it. Hopefully I'll get number 11 done uh, either as we speak. Obviously what happened was I had to do midterm grades. I had two exams to make up and uh, and give and then grade and then put together the midterm grades for this week. Um, and when I say make up the exams, what I do is I have the students write exam questions. So each student writes three questions per chapter. So if you have five chapters, that's 15 questions times one of my classes has 37 students, so there's over 600 and some questions that are constructed, and they have to put uh, the right answer that's marked and three distractors, and they have to put this page in the textbook that is their source material so we can all go and look it up. Well, and then the, for those that, but of course not everybody does this. If everybody did it, all the questions on the exam would be the ones that come from the huge list. And if you study that huge list, you get them all right. Well, not everybody does that. So then I put in questions of my own that they don't see until the exam. But because we're handwriting these questions, you can't use a randomizer program. So it takes me quite a bit of time to make up the first version and then move it to the second version. And I ended up with four versions um, of the both exams. Well, it's the, not because you're handwriting them. It's because you can't, you're not using a program generated right. questions. It's, you could, you could do it, you, you could use Excel to randomize them. We'd still have to cut and paste them. Not Excel really. won't pick them up, will it? I we'll we'll talk about it when yeah, really. before your final because you do it for your finals too, I right? Do it for every exam. Every exam. I can show you maybe next weekend while we're at Rhinebeck just chilling. We'll see. We always think we're gonna have so much time. We never, we have, never have any time. time. No. So anyway, um, but I had four versions because I figured I had thirty seven students. And that meant nine of each version, roughly. And it was very then unlikely, very unlikely then, that someone would be sitting in front of him, back of, or next to someone who had the very same version. And they're rotated in such a way, like, if this is one, two, three, four, I'll take one, put it at ten. Two goes to one, three goes to eleven, and four goes, goes to twenty-one. So they're really then spread out throughout the exam nicely there and what I do is they also then it's not I, I cut and paste them mm -hmm. so that I know that when all the questions are out of version A then they must all be in version right. B and then I take version B and cut that up to yeah. put it in C and then cut C up to put it in D so they're they're really randomized rotated quite well and that way, I don't have to worry about cheating on the exam, and the students don't have to worry about cheating on the exam. Or being accused of cheating. Right. I had what I think was a near religious experience when I was a senior at University of Virginia, and in my physics class, I was sitting for the final. And at UVA, I could have taken the final outside. We signed an honor code that says we will not lie, cheat, or steal. So you can sit on one side of the room and look across the entire room to the windows. Anyway, I came, I had studied my ears off for this exam, and I liked physics. And I got in, and I got my exam, and I wrote my name and completely forgot everything. And I started to pray. <laughs> I just, please God, please, you know I studied, please, please, please. Anyway, after about a half an hour, 45 minutes of this, I, I just started looking out the window. Mm -hmm. And about 15 minutes after that, the book appeared on the window. And I said, that's nice. I don't need just to see the cover of the book. I need to see page 225. And the book opened, and there was the page. I went, thank you, Lord. So I know it was all in my head that there was no book that was 12 feet tall <laughs> that was on that window 
And if that's what I needed to try to remember all the different things that I was studying, that's fine. And I want to let my students have that opportunity too. And I explained this to them before we do the first exam, that there are multiple versions. You don't have to worry about anybody, you know, cribbing from your exam. And having just graded these exams, let me tell you, <laughs> no one should have been copying off of anybody. Maybe there's three people in the room they could have been copying off of. After that, they Or they, they, if they were, they should have been. Right. Yeah. But so it doesn't happen. And I stay in the room. I'm there to answer questions. Um, I, you know, I'm looking, I'm knitting, I'm knitting and looking at you, at them, just like I'm knitting and looking at you. So it, it helps forestall a lot of different problems. But anyway, it takes time is the long story. So I didn't get very many of these socks finished this week. Plus, I have to say I'm getting a little bored because these socks are not for me. These socks are for the class. Um, and, you know, and if I want to... If we run this again, maybe we well, think we're about do investing in a... No, no, what we do is we're going to just have them make okay. the sock. As homework. As homework. That works. Um, That's they can do any really, cast on yeah. and, you know, get it to a certain point, put a line in, and then we can and they can them. make it. they can make it top down even. They could make it top down. Yeah. That would be fine. They could make it top down and we can teach them the, top, the toe up yeah. cast on when we get there. Yes, we'll make it homework. Good plan. But, you know, you live and learn. Live and learn. So I, I'm stretching out my arms. Good. So um, I, I got some done, but I, I'm going to power mm -hmm. through this one, and maybe if I'm good, I'll power through another one tonight. We'll see. I know. I've been talking Did your glasses attack your face? Yes. Okay. That's why I have a Band-Aid. Yes. yes. It's a skin-toned one, so right you all there. might be able, not be able to um, see it, but I was like... Yeah, I, I th it was hot down mm. in Annapolis, and all of a sudden I had a red mark on my face, and I said, yeah. enough of that. So yeah. I'm going to take it off tomorrow and see. Um, I've been changing it. Do I still have a mark on my, like, right, like, in line with where my glasses would be? Like, there was a red mark on my face. There's a little bump? Yeah, I don't know what it is. That's weird. Sorry, I noticed it a few days ago, and I'm like, I can't really see that spot on my face. No, really. So I was like, oh, mom's like in the having, perfect spot to see it right now. Like having um, eyes on the side of your head. I yes, know. Sir. So in other news, my wrist is not braced anymore. I no longer have a bump. I mean, I have oh, a slightly raised. Oh, I have a slightly raised spot, but it was determined that it was a ganglion cyst. Um, they are very common for women in. Uh, they're later, you're know, from about 15 to 45 or so. Really? Yes. Uh, and they happen on wrists, ankles, and some knees. Interesting. Um, and so it's fluid. It's a, it was a fluid-filled sac, essentially. Um, and so they went in and extracted the fluid, and I'm all better. I do still have some pain um, because, obviously, the sac is still in there. Um, but it's not as severe as it was last That's week, good. um, because there's no longer a large mass of stuff pressing on a nerve. Um, it could come back, which is why I am still checking because there is still a bump, but not, yes. but not I mean, that noticeable. could be just the sack that is left there. Um, okay. we'll see. Hopefully mm -hmm. I will not have to resort to surgery or I just am going to brace for you know, the next few years. Because I really don't want to have surgery. really don't want to. Because surgery doesn't always fix it either. Really? Yeah. What happens? They come back. Even then? Because Amazing. it's just, it's um, synovial fluid. Uh-huh. That just finds a place to go, to, to herniate. And that's what causes the cyst. Interesting. Yes. Huh. Yeah. So you're making synovial fluid like crazy and other people need it. You could be a donor of synovial, cis, of synovial fluid. If that were a thing. If it were a thing. I don't think it's a thing. I don't think it's a thing either. So anyway, I'm going up to Rhinebeck Poughkeepsie on Wednesday uh -huh. so that I can be there early on Thursday. Do the check-in desk if they let me, which is what I signed up for. 
And then I have a class on top-down design. I think it's Nordic sweaters. Two color color work. Yes, well, it looks like Yoke. Nordic. <laughs> it looks like Nordic sweaters. Yeah, two color yoke. Yeah. Top down, two <laughs> color yoked sweaters. I got my schedule. I'll be there. <laughs> you know, I'll be lucky if I don't lose my tickets between now and then. You have them on your phone now. I'm, and now I have them on my phone. And then I'm driving back home on Thursday. Um, and I'm driving up on Thursday. Right. So you'll be able to get the key. And then um, I'm driving back up on Friday after classes. And we'll be staying there Friday, Saturday, and leaving later on Sunday. Yes. I'm going to see about a late checkout. Yeah. Um, so then we'll drive home with all of our stuff. Speaking of which, I heard on Netmore Girls that they were able to pick up that sanctuary. And I got a note that I believe my sanctuary had been sent out. But remember, I had ordered some of the mm -hmm. other colors. And they haven't shown up. So. Did change Sanctuary show up? No. But I had this notice saying it had been shipped. Well, Maybe you also all shipped hold, together. You, you told them to hold it. I know, though I don't so know why they might them. It might be all together. Just might wait be. and see. Might be. We'll see. Wait and see. Did you order any? Not yet. Ah, uh, okay. It's still available, I think, till end of month. So then we're going to be at Indie Untangled. Untangled. Uh, we'll be there. We'll be greeters from 1 to 3. Right, so we're supposed to be there by noon. Right. Well, 11.30. 11.30, hopefully. I'm going to do my best. I can't get out until maybe quarter to 10. And I'll... <sighs> Pedal to the metal. I'll do my best. I don't even know where I'm going. You better tell me where I'm going. I know. I'll tell you where you're going. Okay. I'll send you a message that day. Okay. Because then you won't Because you'll be it. up there. I know. Because then yeah. you won't lose it. Right. Right. I'm coming along. You are. Yeah. yeah. This is my life. She sent me a text message on Friday telling me she is presenting a paper at a conference in two weeks. And I was like, okay, that's great. What do you want me to do with this information? I thought it was And like... she goes, and she tells me this now. She goes, oh, I thought it was obvious. I wanted to see if you wanted to get dinner. And I'm yeah. like... <laughs> you could have said I'm presenting at a conference in downtown. Do you want to get dinner? Oh, well, I thought that's kind of implied. <laughs> she said, "I have a. I am presenting a paper at a conference from in the four to five fifteen slot." Right. So, what do you do afterwards? You eat dinner. I thought that it would be fun. Makes sense. I thought it would be fun. Anyway. It is fun, and okay. we are going to get dinner. But like. Did not make sense. Dyslexic. Dyslexic I know. here. Dyslexic. <laughs> we have a problem with ellipsis. Oh, God. It was the worst. It was it hilarious. Was so funny. It really was um, funny. But, yeah. So, what else did we do this week before we even get on to our knitting? Because I know we're already about 20 oh, minutes in we and we've just been rambling. The little book review thing? No. No, what? Tell me. What did we do on, was it Friday morning? Friday? I went to school. Uh-huh. And then you texted me. Oh, yes! We registered for Vogue Knitting Live. It was really good. Do you know what? We we so, don't get their, their very big yeah. packages anymore because we, we have... Food allergies. Yeah. So we, we, we can't issues. really eat at the gala dinner. They do their best to try to make things dairy-free and nut-free, but, you know, we're waiting for an hour, yeah, roughly, before our food comes out. And the cocktail... You know, I don't get that much out of the cocktail hour. No. Um, the dinner I liked because you got to see the uh, the speaker mm -hmm. and you got to see the fashion show. I will say I really did like the dinner. So if any of you are thinking of going and getting like the Broadway package or something, I think the dinner is um, so lovely. So the dinners I think are all sold out. So I'm on the website right now. Yes. Um, but anything that has do the it. gala dinner ticket is sold out. Um, there is a new package called Empire State of Mind, mm -hmm. which does have the cocktail hour. Yes. Or the cocktail reception, which is where they do the, they do show the competition, um, pieces that are there. Um, and then, then they also have a new package called Central Park and Pearl, which is for four classes, um, versus the Broadway package that is usually three classes. Right. Because um, it includes the dinner. No, it doesn't no. include the dinner. Oh, that's the other that's one. That's the one we got. Right. 
That doesn't include the dinner. I'm Sorry. just checking. So anyway, they do have these new packages so that we were able to, we got Nancy Marsha. And we got, so, so we got, on Friday, Knitting with Linen with Nora Gagan. Yes. Which is now sold out. And Basic Brioche One Color with Nancy, Nancy Marchand, Marchand, which is also sold out now. Um, Nancy Marchand is, also, is still available for Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning. If you're looking um, for a Nancy Marchand class, uh, she's like the end all and be all when it comes to brioche. Um, and I was, I'm shocked that the Nora Gagan linen class sold out. I mean, I guess because not a, a lot of us like the linen yarns. But don't know what to do with them. So that'll be good. I'll, I've got linen over here. I do I've got too. a sweater's quantity. I do too. And that came from Barcelona. Someone I know went to Barcelona uh -huh. and got it for me. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be good. And then I'm taking Catherine Lowe for all day Saturday and all day Sunday uh, in terms of, and she's going to be doing various design classes. Yeah. So on Saturday. They're not sold out yet. But Saturday is from inspiration to sample garment. One and two. And Sunday. Sunday is fully fully fashioning, or full fashioning. What is it? Why use it? And how to work it. Yes. So, and then on, so, as I said, I'm taking the Nora Gagan and the Nancy Marchand on Friday. Um, sun, Saturday afternoon, I'm taking the Nancy Marchand knitting with uh, brioche with two colors. Oh, wow. I believe so. I think that's what I did. Um, and then I'm taking, I think I'm taking Josh um, Bennett's uh, bag of tips and tricks oh, on nice. Sunday. That's nice. Yeah. And then there were a couple of lectures we signed up for. Uh, yes, there are. So sure. I, I've got several different sweaters and I've got a couple sock patterns that are like floating around in my mind. And now that we've got this one sock pattern, I may do cut and paste with that sock pattern just for the general directions on, on how to write it. Cause I hate, I love mm -hmm. the fact that Rachel was, was a dear friend of ours. Thank you. Was thank you. Thank you. The editor on that. I don't want to tread on her really generous nature by having her tech edit everything that I design. It would be nice if we could write it a little cleaner than I did the first time. And yet I thought I wrote it really clean, but, um, so anyway, I, I'd like to do as much as I can uh, cut and paste so that we're not, so we're already using her edited material. Right, right. But that only could work for socks. Right. When it comes to sweaters, then I'm hoping right. Catherine Lowe will help, will give us like general tips words, and tricks. Yes. Uh, to yeah. write. Cause I've got, I've got several sweaters in my head too. Yeah. So Vogue Knitting Live, as we said, is the is January twenty fifth, twenty sixth, and twenty seventh. Um, my birthday happens to be the twenty sixth. Yeah. So we might do something for it. Like what? I don't know. Maybe a thing. I don't know. I don't know. We have to figure it out. But this was your idea. <laughs> I rented the room. I know. So we have we'll a figure room. Figure it out. Uh, maybe there'll be a room thing. Maybe I'll just be like, room let's go last thing. year. Yeah. So really maybe depends. I'll find out when it India depends. Untangled is doing her thing and then I might just tag on to that. Um, okay. But yeah, so it's very exciting. I did. Uh, we when got I, a big room last year. We got a we decent sized room. We had a really big room the year two before. years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know how to do that again. I don't know either. I tried. I showed up the that two years ago. I showed up at four o'clock in the morning yeah. um, because it's easier to drive in then. Well, we did it at like midnight, 1 a.m. last year. Did we? Because, yeah. And then. Because you were like, I'm not checking in before 11 p.m. And then we realized we left some stuff here at the house. So we had right. to come back here and then drive all the way in. Right. Um, but we, we got a nice room, but not as big a room. Right. We'll find out. We'll see. Um, but they did release uh, the vendors, and Stephanie from Asylum Fibers got a, is going to be vending. Knit and Roslyn is going to be vending. Where? At Vogue. Vogue. Oh, yes. And, and we've been asked to dye some yarn for uh -huh. uh, Vogue Knitting by um, Knit. Yes. Um, so we'll 
be getting our dye uh, pods And out. then Clinton Hill Cashmere is going to be back. Nice. Um, what are some other... But I know um, Asylum is new, and so she's new to Vogue, which is very exciting, and I'm, we're very excited we're for ve- her. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, and it's a lot of the same group. Whoa, what happened there? I just swiped weird. Plucky. 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 Plucky will be there. Tess will be there as usual. Well, look, Woolies is going to yeah, be there. Woolly, Woolly was there last year. Were they? Yeah. I missed them. Yeah. Oh, and then Yarn Over New York, I noticed. Um, I didn't know, note them last year, so yeah, some really interesting things. Go check it out. It's at VogueKnittingLive.com, uh, and you can check that out. And Apparently, it's one of the ready. biggest Vogue Knitting Lives in the country. Well, I think it is the biggest. Well, I think so, too. Um, I managed to win one year tickets to any Vogue Knitting Live that I wanted to go. And I was sitting next to a woman on a Sunday morning talking over the fact that I'd won these and what did she think? Because she was from Seattle. She said, listen, this is, I come here Mm -hmm. because I want to see as many vendors as possible. I went, okay. So Mm -hmm. come to New York if you can. Um, it makes a very interesting show. And if you didn't get uh, any of Nathan Taylor's classes, Sockmatician's classes for Rhinebeck or at a, any other event maybe, uh, check out. I'm going to check if all of his have sold out or not this year. No, he's still uh, available for classes. Um, I don't know when the rest of the packages will be opening, but they should be opening soon since non-early bird pricing starts in December. And he's got almost all new classes. He's got demystifying double knitting. He's got one pass brioche, brioche, um, double knitted lace, I can't even imagine, uh, shaping the future of double knitting, and knit nerdism. You know, you know how much I like Nathan. And if I wasn't hit on trying to really get well grounded in how to design patterns, I would be all over this schedule. I really would be. So I, we highly recommend him. Um, you've met him. I've taken classes with him. I think he's great. He's got a great personality when he's given a class. Like Franklin Habit. Like Franklin Habit. Franklin Habit. I am kind of peeved because I looked and they he's doing embroidery part two not embroidery part one and one of like kind of the prerequisites for that class is embroidery, embroidery one part, yeah so we couldn't and I it. would feel a little like a bad student if I didn't take embroidery one right. before taking embroidery two right. um but that's just me and my little Weirdo brain. Um, I'm sure there'll be people in there uh, hadn't taken it. Probably, but... But won't be us. Not us. No. Um, but we are still ever, ever so vigilantly looking for uh, Franklin teaching that uh, embroidery Very like Amy Detchen. Oh, uh, yes. Amy has some good classes this year, too. As I said... Um, Amy Herzog is there this year. Mina Phillips. Um, is teaching? Knitting Expat is teaching. What is she teaching? She's got three classes. She is teaching, I think, sweater math and a, and two sock classes. Uh, how to knit six socks two at a time. Pattern math. And how to knit the modified heel flap adjustment and German short row heel. That's right. She developed that. Yep. And I think that would be a very good class. Mm-hmm. So she's teaching Saturday afternoon and evening and Sunday afternoon. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Pattern math. I wonder what that is. It is essentially what oh. we do to oh, that. mess with It's not sizing gauge. your patterns up and down. All nope. Right. It's how to I'm make hoping your that gauge Catherine work. Well is going to teach Talk me Talk about grading. Do. Yeah, grading. Yeah. Yeah. So... What have you been knitting? Have you only been knitting so- your little sockums? All these little week? socks. And you can see, look, that's where the heel, afterthought heel goes in. So I am at least 10 rows above that. And this is all the yarn I have left. So, so I'm maybe gonna, you should start the ribbing. Uh, I may, I'm going to start the ribbing. So Thank this you. one will be a short one. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, and but you don't want to splice in another color. I do, no, I do not. Yeah, I so when not. you get to the end of that side, Round. yeah. Yes, I'll start the ribbing. Yeah. So, I've done a little bit of everything this week. 
What? The tears, the screams. No, what? Yeah, no, for real. Um, so, I have knit. I can't remember if I had only one sleeve done or almost a sleeve done. So now I have two full sleeves. Wow. Um, I love it. I find it and very it looks really good I find on. it very amusing that my sleeves are as long as the body. Um, that's how long my freaking arms are. <laughs> They're can lovely you, arms. Can you tell that I got really, really frustrated with how long my sleeves I are? I love that chuck. It's I really know. nice. Great. I kept looking. I know you like shouldn't look down while you're driving, but while I was in stop and go traffic, I was like, "Oh, the cables are really lovely." I just they kept on being like, so "They were nicely. so lovely." I know. And I don't think it looks overly handmade. If the Asylum would make that hold your beer in DK weight, I would buy it to make the chuck. You can talk to her about doing a custom. I will. Um, so, yeah, I love this sweater, and I do, I do think it looks like something you wouldn't necessarily be able to get off the rack, but I, so. I do think it's still, you know, fine enough to wear to work. It's not like, no, it's I nice. mean, I wore my, um, my Rosa, the one that's the blue and gray variegated to work a few days mm -hmm. ago, and of course no one blinks an eye at me, because it's me. Um. I mean, your girl has purple hair, so. But I did finish the ribbing or the hem on this yesterday. And then she came over here. No, no. And then I tried it on, and I couldn't get it over my butt. Well, I did. I got it over my butt. But I was at a friend's house, and I was like, hmm. I think this is too tight. I think I have to redo the the um, bind off. And she was like, Yeah, just maybe. She doesn't knit, so she is like, if that's what you think needs to be done, I think so. And I'm like, okay. And then I looked, and then I, you know, took it off, and I started taking out the bind off, and I knit about a row or two more, and then I was like, do you think that the hem looked too tight compared to the rest of the sweater? And she was like, I don't know. I can't really remember, but it, it there was something off about it. So I came, I, I stopped knitting on it. It went in timeout, and then I picked up my Zug. Mm -hmm. But I came in this morning, or this afternoon, with Mom, and I put it on. And I tried it on with my new, I got, so I don't know if I mentioned, but I got a whole bunch of stuff on sale at Pin Up Girl. And I have the Lily uh, cropped um, pants, cropped leggings, essentially. But they're, like, fully opaque. Um, so I think I'm going to wear those mm -hmm. actually with this sweater for Rhinebeck. Um, but it was too tight. And I, so the instructions say pick up in a one-to-one -one ratio. However, along that edge, there is a slip stitch. So do I pick up one for every slip stitch or two for every slip stitch? And I had done one and it was quite small. So I went back and I picked up every one. Well, I picked up one in every slip stitch and then, you know, did a yarn over essentially um, to pick up two because I like the finished edge that happens because there's, along that edge on this sweater, there are decreases. So it creates a nice, like, line of kind of like little stitch soldiers along the bottom. And it's a very nice little, like, finishing touch. So now I'm going to be knitting probably, so my cuffs are uh, 14 rows. I think I'm going to make the hem about 20 and then I'll put it on waist yarn and try it on. Um, I might and oh, I could make it 21 and then that should make it, mm, that'll make it a third larger. So, so 14 yes. is an inch and a half. Okay. The bottom hem is supposed to be two inches. Should I make it three inches? Because it might be a better proportion. I think you can stop at two inches and see what it looks like. Looks like that's what I'll do. So that's about that's about twenty rows. Yep, it certainly is. So I will do that. Um but this is almost done, or essentially done, which is very That's exciting. 
Um, so then, as I said, I was working on my Zweig, and if the bag will open, come on back, come on, there we go, um, and I got about another inch and a half done on the sleeves, so I think I've got about five inches, whoa, that was good. That was good. It was um, almost very good. Yeah. Um, I think I've got about five, in four or five inches on the sleeve. I need twelve before I get to the ribbing. So let's see how much sleep I get this week, because um, I still have to finish the body. Oh my god! Well, don't make yourself sick. I won't. So that is that. I think I managed to make a sock with 29 stitches on each side. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It will be fine. It will be fine. Um, and then I have kind of, I mean, I've been working on my Tanya at lunch and on the subway. It looks like but, a ballerina skirt. Yes. But I wanted your opinion. So it says to make it 13 inches from the cast on. Okay. Should I do it in a blocked format or in an unblocked format? Because the schematic also shows from cast on to underarm is 13 inches. Okay. Um, I would do it in an unblocked. Then I'm worried that I might not have enough yarn. Oh, well then, <laughs> then do it blocked. Or go with, yeah. If, if that's the problem, then you do it blocked. Yeah, because I think, so it comes. Because when we knit sweaters and they tell you to go to 13 inches, normally we do it as we're knitting. We don't wait and block it. Right, but that's also usually then if you have a question like this, you compare it to the schematic. Right. So this we get about six and a quarter mm -hmm. of the lace. Okay. Unblocked, it's about four and a half, five inches. So that's enough to save you. I think that's enough to save me. Then do it. Okay. Because you're going to block it, and you'll block yeah. it so that that's the length of it. Yeah. Just make sure you measure to make sure that that's the length that you're going to block your lace to. Well, I think I'm going... So once I hit 13, or once I hit 6 inches above the, the lace, because I'm at... I'm only at 3, guys. Lord help me. Um, I'm at maybe 3.5. Um... But once I hit about six, I figure I will take the needles off and put it on um, stoppers and baptize it. Okay. And, you know, make sure that this is how it's going to lay. We like the, you know, it doesn't grow exponentially. Uh, I, you know, I want to give it an inch. Whose urine is it? Neighborhood. Studio sock. I don't think I've ever had something of theirs grow exponentially, but could. Your, your thing downstairs in Avalon. It didn't grow exponentially. I did, I right, altered but you the can, pattern. But also you blocked, when you block that thing, you can. You can do things to it. Yeah, so yes. what I'm saying is, is I don't know. I got a little Philip on the, the hem. Peplum. So I took it out. Yeah. So I think that... And now I think I'm going to steam it, the bottom once we get it to the, where we like it. Yeah. Uh, to get rid of the bend mm. at the hem. So, okay. Yeah, I need it to be a little bit more straight down than it is. Yeah, because if we do this and we just mess it around so that it doesn't keep its shape from when it was just blocked out, like... Mm -hmm. it's. But you are, you, it's I'm, lace. I have to block it out. And yes. yeah, it hits maybe five inches. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. it's lace and lace always has to be 
at least so you can see it. Yeah. Because otherwise, what's the point? I mean, my Mount Pleasant doesn't always get blocked out nicely every time I wash it. I try to, but it's because I wear it quite often. Okay. It's a good... It's if a, I get another round and then I think I had to bind off. I would... Hold on. I think you could do a round and bind off, but... We'll try. If not, we'll take it out yep. and bind off. Um, so I was working on that, and then of course I put a project in my, um, bag to start. Weekend. Yeah, to start. I want to make the Fluxon, Fluxon, Fluxons hat. I don't remember who it's by, um, but I wanted to make it out of the leftover of this smashing and the leftover from my Miranda because I think a black and white hat would be quite fetching. Very fetching. Um, obviously, though, I did not get to it. Yeah, about that. Um, so we'll see when that gets done. Um, what else have I done this that, week? That's an acquisition over there. So, if we're moving on to acquisitions. What the heck, you know. Acquisitions. Oh, yes. So. Deep sale. Deep, deep sale. If you know anything about Pinup Girl clothing, do go and take a look at their sale. I know I'm a week late. I think I mentioned it last week. Maybe not. Um, everything in the sale section of the site is $25 or less. So I got all of this for $85, including shipping. Two pairs of pants and two shirts. Two pairs shirts. of pants and two tops. Um, so I got this, which I've actually been kind of wanting for a few months. It's very pretty it on. It is super cute on. Um, and then I got a, a white boat neck, kind of uh, looser top, um, also cropped. Also very cute. But it, it lays pretty um, positively, positive ease. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, as I said, I got the lily pants um, in gray, and then some really the good looking black pants of finds. These are the Mina pants. They have a pocket, um, and they fit perfectly. So I just bought them because they were on sale, and they were a pair of black pants. And I figured, you know what? If they don't fit, they'll fit Mom, and she'll get a new pair of pants. You Always know? can use a pair of black pants. Um, but they fit. And I went back and I checked the inseam. And it's because they're a 31 and a half inseam. Versus the 29 that right, pants usually are yes. on that site. Well, usually the straight leg pants are a 29. Or they're cropped like the lilies are. The lilies are 24 or 26. I can't remember. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I have to figure out whether or not it's okay for me to wear, like, if it's kosher to wear, to cropped, wear pants. cropped pants with taller, pa like, leg boots. boots. At work. I mean, like, it should be fine, because they're covered, the, the, like, I can wear cropped pants to work. That's not a problem. So then what's the problem? The problem is the fashion of wearing black shoes with gray pants with light gray pants oh. or do I have to search another sale and get brown knee-high boots I think you look and see what they look like all right um but I'm very excited about the Mina pants I think they she look very pretty excited. good um and it is very exciting to have a pair of slimmer black pants to wear to work also in acquisitions, so as I mentioned, the Stiatch Along started, or was supposed to start today, or yesterday, and it did. I have not stitched the... <gasps> I found my pin! So oh, nice. I thought I had lost my pin from Nerd Bur Nerdy Bird um, Studios, and I didn't. It was at the bottom of my bag. 
All right, so put it someplace. I'm going to put it in the bag where the back is. And then I'm going to buy the safety backs like all the girls said do. Once I posted being like, I think I lost it. Oh, dear. Sorry, this was a whole saga. I didn't hear about this saga. No, because I don't remember why. Um, so, yay. Okay, then I need to buy the safety backs. Yes. Um, I also need to buy the safety backs because... Lisa got the whip and whiskey pins. Oh, really? Oh, Rhinebeck. Um, so the Stiatch along uh, began yesterday. Um, I am on team the Stitch That Never Sleeps. <laughs> um, and with the help of my boyfriend, I picked this palette. Very pretty. We liked... He like he was like they're all nice. I think this one's the most maybe out of my comfort zone. Okay. And it was just it was just very pretty. So um, I'm very excited about it. Um, I have to stitch the first one, but in my excitement and also just general malaise over the uh, state of the world, Would you I buy? bought. An otter needle minder. Oh, that's cute. So I bought him from... I like that. Flying Frog Stitchery. He's so cute. And what came with him was a Wonder Woman. Oh! So I was really, really pleased. Um, I wasn't expecting the Wonder Woman, um, but there she is. Uh, so Wonder Woman is on my currently gridded piece but not stitched yet. Um, so I'm going to try and stitch that before next Saturday uh, so that I can keep up with this one. Yeah, yeah, we'll see about how that goes. With, with Rhinebeck going on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with Rhinebeck. Um, so yeah, so that's those acquisitions. Oh, it was such an exciting week. It was so exciting to get those. I think I actually got those last week, but I forgot them at home. <laughs> so I got those. And then what also came was my random fandom. So this is that on, is so I know. Pretty. So this is on Zen fingering, which is Superwash Merino, Silk, and Yak. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And it's called Thriller. Nice. So, yeah, I have to, I, I love it. It's so beautiful. Um... I'm trying to tell myself I don't need a sweater, but it's so pretty. Oh, forget pretty. It's It feels so oh, good. Oh, it's so great. And they she also has a DK of it. Mm. So, yeah. I'm trying to tell myself I do not need this. You don't need this. I do not this. need this, no. You don't need this. Give it to me. I don't need it. <laughs> Mine. I understand. Um. So, yeah. So, that's that's my acquisitions. Um, those were my current works. I think we need to talk about what we did this afternoon. Oh, what did we do this afternoon, Mother? We went to the Bryant Library in Roslyn, where there was the Friends of Bryant Library presents the 35th annual William Cullen Bryant event, Fairy Knitting with Alice Hoffman and Lisa Hoffman, co-sponsored by Knit. So there's the brochure. That's the book that they did. This is Lisa Hoffman and this is Alice Hoffman. And Alice Hoffman um, is a, a very well-known novelist. But, and she's local to Roslyn. Yes, both of them are local to Roslyn. And uh, Lisa Hoffman works at uh, string? String, string in the city, uh, teaches knitting classes and does some knitwear design. And so... Alice Hoffman wrote some um, magical um, fairy, tales. fairy tales, and Lisa Hoffman then designed an accompanying piece of clothing or knitwear mm -hmm. to go along with it that would fit in with the uh, fairy tale. We did some yarn, we mm -hmm. dyed some yarn that we thought would go with some of the patterns, and some of it did sell, so that was nice. And Knit has the rest of it, so that's good. 
it was really very interesting. Um, I, I found it vastly fascinating. It was lovely. Absolutely fascinating. Um, some really good questions that people asked. Like, how did she get her inspiration mm -hmm. uh, for the patterns that she was making? And she said, well, they had to go with the stories. Yes. Um, and so the stories dictated the design. And it, it was very nice. They had people in the audience who were modeling the clothing. So that was very nice to actually see what it looks like on. That sweater that was supposed to be like uh, an apron. I actually liked it. Once... Well, um, just so you all know, the thorn hat from the book is uh, available free on Ravelry. Oh. It's very nice. It's a very lovely hat. It is a nice, that is a very nice hat. Very cabled, very interwoven I like cabled. I like it. That is really nice. So yeah. check, check and look at the thorn hat by Lisa Hoffman on Ravelry. I didn't realize that there was something. She said it during the event ah. and I caught on to that. So you liked the that that on the, the broken hearted good. vest. Yes, hmm. it's interesting. It is. Um, she saw it as like one of those working women pockets things. Yeah. So and there's beautiful cables on the back. Mm. I think it. So maybe if you put cables down the front too, maybe that might be really interesting. Yeah. So there was that, and then did you see the rest of the stuff that was being? I did not. Oh. I did not. Um, I do like that shawl. Yes. That uh, they were talking about the blue heron shawl is yes. quite pretty, um, as well as the seventh sister capelet. Yes, they um, show that too. I do like it was those. really good. Yeah. And then the two color mitts. Yes, uh, the uh, rose wristlets. Yes, because they're, they're done with double knitting. And therefore, what's white on one side is red on the other. And that was, was quite nice. Um, there were, I think, all of two men in the audience. I was sitting behind one of them, so I leaned over and asked him if he knit. And he said, nope, I don't knit a stitch. My wife used to knit. Now, I don't know whether he's a widower or divorced person person uh, or what his story is but it sounded like his wife was in the past mm -hmm. um, so we had a, a little chat and he says he goes to these William Culling Bryant's literary discussions all the time and so he was there because that's his schedule um, so it was a nice group of people it was kind of an overcast cloudy day yeah. so it was a not, lovely fall day it was a very good fall day a good day to wear your knit Knitting yes. garments like this. Um, Knit had a raffle that they donated the proceeds to the friends of the library, oh, which lovely. is very nice. Um, and then one of the people that's fairly regular at the store oh, actually yes. won. Um, I don't recall her name off the top of my head. I'm no. sorry. And uh, it was a really nice event. So accolades to the library, accolades to the friends of the library, and accolade to Cheryl and yes. Nett for having the whole thing really come uh -huh. off well. Um, so that was really very good. Yeah. And is there anything else? I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm about to finish this one very short sock. Good. But... It'll be finished, and then I can start the next one. So this is what, this is five. This is eleven, and we'll be going on to twelve. So that's good. And I've got. And I've look, got, this is this is all the yarn I had left. I got this? five eighths of an inch of a hem because I doubled my stitches from before. Oh well. So. I figure I will sit and knit here at the house for a little bit. We'll check on the traffic because traffic was the worst yes or this morning. Coming up. This afternoon. What time did you leave Philadelphia? Like 11. I should have been able to get there at, by 2. I don't know. I've had I've had the trip from Philadelphia take as much as four and a half hours and as little as two and a half. So. I can usually bank on it being a solid 2. All I'm saying is that you were four years at Villanova. I know, and, and I, yeah, we were all slow moving this morning, but yeah. I couldn't very well walk out on them because my friends, because no. my friends, they I were, didn't, were making me breakfast. I just said 
I know. I didn't make any aspersions as to when you could walk out. I was just saying that traffic from Philadelphia has a wide range. It really does. Yes. It really does. Um, but I think it is time that we, well, well you, weave in your ends. I'm going to try weaving in my ends. Actually, I'm going to start another, another little sock here because I will weave in all the ends while I'm sitting in a hotel room. Good. In uh, Rhinebeck. But here we are. We've got a Woo! little sock. And you had enough. Well, just enough because you Good. told me when to do it. So it's a lovely afternoon at the William uh, Cullen Bryant um, Library. And I'll make sure to post on our Instagram, uh, hopefully a selfie of Mom and I on Saturday and Sunday so that you know what we're wearing uh, so you can keep an eye out for us. And we oh, look forward. that's a really good yeah, idea. Yeah, I know. I just thought Brilliant. of that. Uh, so, uh, we hope to meet you all then. I believe we'll be on the hill during the podcaster meetup. Yes. Which we're is, gonna rush what, off. one o'clock? Yeah, but we have a we class. We have a class at two. two. Um, so, we're going to be running both off days, to the class. But we will be there at one o'clock. Um, yes. so hopefully we will see you there. Yes. Uh, and if not, register for Vogue Knitting Live and we'll hope to see you there. That'd be great. All right. See talk to you later. Bye. Bye.